A Zeppelin is a type of rigid airship named after the German Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin who pioneered rigid airship development at the beginning of the 20th century. Zeppelin's ideas were first formulated in 1874 and developed in detail in 1893. They were patented in Germany in 1895 and in the United States in 1899. After the outstanding success of the Zeppelin design, the word Zeppelin came to be commonly used to refer to all rigid airships. Zeppelins were first flown commercially in 1910 by Deutsche Luftfahrts AG, the world's first airline in revenue service. By mid-1914, DELAG had carried over 10,000 fare-paying passengers on over 1,500 flights. During World War I the German military made extensive use of Zeppelins as bombers and scouts, killing over 500 people in bombing raids in Britain. The defeat of Germany in 1918 temporarily halted the airship business. Although DELAG established a scheduled daily service between Berlin, Munich, and Friedrichshafen in 1919, the airships built for this service eventually had to be surrendered under the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, which also prohibited Germany from building large airships. An exception was made allowing the construction of one airship for the U.S. Navy, which saved the company from extinction. In 1926 the restrictions on airship construction were lifted and with the aid of donations from the public work was started on the construction of LZ-127 Graf Zeppelin. This revived the company fortunes, and during the 1930s when the airships Graf Zeppelin and the larger LZ-129 Hindenburg operated regular transatlantic flights from Germany to North America and Brazil. The Art Deco spire of the Empire State Building was originally, if impractically, designed to serve as a mooring mast for Zeppelins and other airships. The Hindenburg disaster in 1937, along with political and economic issues, hastened the demise of the Zeppelins. Principal Characteristics The principal feature of Zeppelin's design was a fabric-covered rigid metal framework made up from transverse rings and longitudinal girders containing a number of individual gas bags. The advantage of this design was that the aircraft could be much larger than non-rigid airships, which relied on a slight overpressure within the single pressure envelope to maintain their shape. The framework of most Zeppelins was made of duralumin. Early Zeppelins used rubberized cotton for the gas bags, but most later craft used gold beater skin, made from the intestines of cattle. The first Zeppelins had long cylindrical hulls with tapered ends and complex multiplane fins. During World War I, following the lead of their rivals Schuh one quarter TTE Lands Luftstiff bow, the design changed to the more familiar streamlined shape with cruciform tail surfaces, as used by almost all later airships. They were propelled by several engines, mounted in gondolas or engine cars, which were attached to the outside of the structural framework. Some of these could provide reverse thrust for maneuvering while mooring. A comparatively small compartment for passengers and crew was built into the bottom of the frame, but in later Zeppelins this was not the entire habitable space. They often carried passengers or cargo internally for aerodynamic reasons. History, Early Designs Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin's serious interest in airship development began in 1874, when he took inspiration from a lecture given by Heinrich von Steffen on the subject of world postal services and air travel to outline the basic principle of his later craft in a diary entry dated March 25, 1874. This describes a large rigidly framed outer envelope containing several separate gas bags. He had previously encountered Union Army balloons in 1863 when he visited the United States as a military observer during the American Civil War. Count Zeppelin began to seriously pursue his project after his early retirement from the military in 1890 at the age of 52. Convinced of the potential importance of aviation, he started working on various designs in 1891, and had completed detailed designs by 1893. An official committee reviewed his plans in 1894, and he received a patent, granted on August 31, 1895, with Theodore Kobeira producing the technical drawings. Zeppelin's patent described a link bearer Luftfahrzeug mit Mürer and Hinterrhein and an Angel Nieten Tragler paragraph a PERN, steerable airship train with several carrier structures arranged one behind another, 
an airship consisting of flexibly articulated rigid sections. The front section, containing the crew and engines, was 117.35 am long with a gas capacity of 95.14 km, the middle section was 16 am long with an intended useful load of 599 kg and the rear section 39.93 am long with an intended load of 1996 kg. Count Zeppelin's attempts to secure government funding for his project proved unsuccessful, but a lecture given to the Union of German Engineers gained their support. Zeppelin also sought support from the industrialist Karl Berg, then engaged in construction work on the second airship design of David Schwartz. Berg was under contract not to supply aluminium to any other airship manufacturer, and subsequently made a payment to Schwartz's widow as compensation for breaking this agreement. Schwartz's design differed fundamentally from Zeppelin's, crucially lacking the use of separate gas bags inside a rigid envelope. In 1898 Count Zeppelin founded the Gesellschaft zur Fahrparagraf Riederung der Luftschifffahrt, contributing more than half of its 800,000 a mark share capital himself. Responsibility for the detailed design was given to Kobewa, whose place was later taken by Ludwig da one quarter R and construction of the first airship began in 1899 in a floating assembly hall in the Bay of Mansell near Friedrichshafen on Lake Constance. The intention behind the floating hall was to facilitate the difficult task of bringing the airship out of the hall, as it could easily be aligned with the wind. The LZ-1 was 128 meters long with a hydrogen capacity of 11,000 AM3 was driven by two 15-horsepower Daimler engines each driving a pair of propellers mounted either side of the envelope via bevel gears and a drive shaft, and was controlled in pitch by moving a weight between its two nacelles. The first flight took place on July 2, 1900 over Lake Constance. Damaged during landing, it was repaired and modified and proved its potential in two subsequent flights made on 17 and 24 October 1900 bettering the 6 AMS velocity attained by the French airship La France. Despite this performance, the shareholders declined to invest more money, and so the company was liquidated, with Count von Zeppelin purchasing the ship and equipment. The Count wished to continue experimenting, but he eventually dismantled the ship in 1901. Donations, the profits of a special lottery, some public funding, a mortgage of Count von Zeppelin's wife's estate and a 100,000 mark contribution by Count von Zeppelin himself allowed the construction of LZ-2, which made only a single flight on January 17, 1906. After both engines failed it made a forced landing in the Olga Currency Mountains, where a storm subsequently damaged the anchored ship beyond repair. Incorporating all the usable parts of LZ-A2, its successor LZ-3 became the first truly successful Zeppelin. This renewed the interest of the German military, but a condition of purchase of an airship was a 24-hour endurance trial. This was beyond the capabilities of LZ-A3, leading Zeppelin to construct his fourth design, the LZ-4, first flown on on June 20, 1908. On July 1 it was flown over Switzerland to Tsar one quarter rich and then back to Lake Constance covering 386 km and reaching an altitude of 795 m. An attempt to complete the 24-hour trial flight ended when LZA-4 had to make a landing at Ektedingen near Stuttgart because of mechanical problems. During the stop, a storm tore the airship away from its moorings on the afternoon of August 5, 1908. It crashed into a tree, caught fire, and quickly burnt out. No one was seriously injured. This accident would have finished Zeppelin's experiments, but his flights had generated huge public interest and a sense of national pride regarding his work, and spontaneous donations from the public began pouring in, eventually totaling over six million marks. This enabled the Count to found the Luftschiffbau Zeppelin GmbH and the Zeppelin Foundation. Before World War I Before World War I a total of 21 more Zeppelin airships were manufactured. LZA-3 and LZA-5, a sister ship to LZA-4 which was completed in May 1909, were bought by the German army, respectively designated Tsar 1 and Tsar 2. Tsar 2 was wrecked in a gale in April 1910, while Tsar I was flown until 1913, 
when it was decommissioned and replaced by LZA-15, designated ersatz I. First flown on January 16, 1913, it was wrecked on March 19 of the same year. In April 1913 its newly built sister ship LZA-15 accidentally intruded into French airspace owing to a navigational error caused by high winds and poor visibility. The commander judged that it was proper to land the airship to demonstrate that the incursion was accidental, and brought the ship down on the military parade ground at Luna Copyrightville. The airship remained on the ground until the following day, permitting a detailed examination by French airship experts. In 1909 Count Zeppelin founded the world's first airline, the Deutsche Luftstiftungsakteien Gesellschaft, generally known as DELAG to promote his airships, initially using LZA-6, which he had hoped to sell to the German army. The airships were not used to provide a scheduled service between cities, but generally operated pleasure cruises, carrying 20 passengers. The airships were given names in addition to their production numbers. LZA-6 first flew on August 25, 1909 and was accidentally destroyed in baden Ouse on September 14, 1910 by a fire in its hangar. The second DELAG airship, LZA-7 Deutschland, made its maiden voyage on June 19, 1910. On June 28 it set off on a voyage to publicize Zeppelins, carrying 19 journalists as passengers. A combination of adverse weather and engine failure brought it down at Mount Limburg near Bad Iberg in Lower Saxony, its hull getting stuck in trees. All passengers and crew were unhurt, except for one crew member who broke his leg when he jumped from the craft. It was replaced by LZA-8 Deutschlander II which also had a short career, first flying on March 30, 1911 and damaged beyond repair when caught by a strong crosswind when being walked out of its shed on May 16. The company's fortunes changed with the next ship, LZ-10 Schwerben, which was first flown on June 26, 1911 and carried 1,553 passengers in 218 flights before catching fire after a gust tore it from its mooring near Dar 1 quarter Seldorf. Other DELAG ships were LZ-A-11 Victoria Luz, LZ-13 Hamza and LZ-A-17 and LZ-A-17 Sachsen. By the outbreak of war in August 1914-1588 flights had been made carrying 10,197 fair-paying passengers. The Navy ordered its first Zeppelin on April 24, 1912. This was an enlarged version of the airships operated by DELAG and was given the naval designations R1 and entered Navy service in October 1912. On January 18, 1913 Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz Secretary of State of the German Imperial Naval Office, obtained the agreement of Kaiser Wilhelm II to a five-year program of expansion of German naval airship strength, involving the building of two airship bases and constructing a fleet of ten airships. The first airship of the program, La 2, was ordered on January 30. La 1 was lost on September 9 near Heligoland when caught in a storm while taking part in an exercise with the German fleet. Fourteen crew members were drowned, the first fatalities in a Zeppelin accident. Less than six weeks later, on October 17, LZA-18 caught fire during its acceptance trials, killing the entire crew. These accidents deprived the Navy of most of its experienced personnel, the head of the Admiralty Air Department was killed in the LA-1 and his successor died in the LA-2. The Navy was left with three partially trained crews. The next Navy Zeppelin, the M-Class La 3 did not enter service until May 1914, in the meantime, Sachsen was hired from DELAG as a training ship. By the outbreak of war in August 1914, Zeppelin were constructing the first M-Class airships, which were 158 am long, with a volume of 22,500 cubic meters and a useful load of 9,100 kilograms. They were powered by three Maybach CX engines producing a total of 470 kilowatts each, and could reach speeds of up to 84 kilometers per hour. During World War I, the German airships were operated by the Army and Navy as two entirely separate organizations. When World War I broke out, the Army took over the three remaining DELAG ships. By this time, it had already decommissioned three older Zeppelins, including Tsar I. 
During the war the Navy Zeppelins were mainly used in reconnaissance missions. Bombing missions, especially those targeting London, captured the German public's imagination, but had little significant material success, although the Zeppelin raids, together with the later bombing raids carried out by aeroplanes, did cause the diversion of men and equipment from the Western Front and fear of the raids had some effect on industrial production. Early offensive operations by Army airships revealed that they were extremely vulnerable to ground fire unless flown at high altitude, and several were lost. No bombs had been developed, and the early raids dropped artillery shells instead. On August 5, 1914 Tsar 6 bombed Lear GE. Flying at a relatively low altitude because of cloud cover, the airship was damaged by small arms fire and was destroyed in a forced landing near Bonn. On August 21 Tsar 7 and Tsar 8 were damaged by ground fire while supporting German army operations in Alsace, and Tsar 8 was lost. On the night of 24-August 25 Tsar 9 bombed Antwerp, dropping bombs near the Royal Palace and killing five people. A second, less effective raid was made on the night of 1 Euro September 2 and a third on October 7, but on October 8 Tsar 9 was destroyed in its hangar at Dar 1 quarter sold off by FLT Lieutenant Reginald Merricks, RNAS. On the Eastern Front, Tsar V was brought down by ground fire on August 28 during the Battle of Tannenberg. Most of the crew were captured. Tsar IV bombed Warsaw on September 24 and was also used to support German army operations in East Prussia. By the end of 1914 the army's airship strength was reduced to four. On March 20, temporarily forbidden from bombing London by the Kaiser, Tsar X, LZA-35 and the Shu one quarter TTE lands airship Slatu set off to bomb Paris. Slatu was damaged by artillery fire while crossing the front and turned back but the two Zeppelins reached Paris and dropped 1,800 kg of bombs, killing one and wounding eight. On the return journey Tsar X was damaged by anti-aircraft fire and was damaged beyond repair in the resulting force landing. Three weeks later LZA-35 suffered a similar fate after bombing Poperigny. Two further missions were flown against Paris in January 1916. On January 29 LZA-79 killed 23 and injured another 30 but was so severely damaged by anti-aircraft fire that it crashed during the return journey. A second mission by LZA-77 the following night bombed the suburbs of Asnieres and Versailles, with little effect. Airship operations in the Balkans started in the autumn of 1915, and an airship base was constructed at St. Andres. In November 1915 LZA-81 was used to fly diplomats to Sofia for negotiations with the Bulgarian government. This base was also used by LZA-85 to conduct two raids on Salonika in early 1916, a third raid on May 4 ended with it being brought down by anti-aircraft fire. The crew survived but were taken prisoner. When Romania entered the war in August 1916 LZA-101 was transferred to Yambal and bombed Bucharest on August 28, September 4 and September 25. LZA-86, transferred to St Andres and made a single attack on the Ploesti oil fields in September 4 but was wrecked on attempting to land after the mission. Its replacement, LZA-86, was damaged by anti-aircraft fire during its second attack on Bucharest on September 26 and was damaged beyond repair in the resulting force landing, and was replaced by LZA-97. At the instigation of the Kaiser a plan was made to bomb St. Petersburg in December 1916. Two Navy Zeppelins were transferred to Wainoden on the Kulin Peninsula. A preliminary attempt to bomb Raval on December 28 ended in failure caused by operating problems due to the extreme cold, and one of the airships was destroyed in a forced landing at Sarapan. The plan was subsequently abandoned. In 1917 the German High Command made an attempt to use a Zeppelin to deliver supplies to Letter Vorbeck's forces in German East African. La 57 a specially lengthened craft was to have flown the mission but was destroyed shortly after completion. A Zeppelin then under construction, La 59, was then modified for the mission, it set off from Yamble on November 21, 1917 and nearly reached its destination, but was ordered to return by radio. 
its journey covered 6,400 km and lasted 95 hours. It was then used for reconnaissance and bombing missions in the eastern Mediterranean. It flew one bombing mission against Naples on the Tana Euro March 11, 1918. A planned attack on Suez was turned back by high winds, and on April 7, 1918 it was on a mission to bomb the British naval base at Malta when it caught fire over the Straits of Otranto, with the loss of all its crew. On 5 January 1918, a fire at Arlen destroyed four of the specialized double sheds along with four zeppelins and one Sha one quarter TTE lands. In July 1918, the Tondran raid conducted by the RNAS, destroyed two zeppelins in their sheds. 1914 a Euro 1918 naval patrols. The main use of the airship was in reconnaissance over the North Sea and the Baltic, and the majority of airships manufactured were used by the Navy. Patrolling had priority over any other airship activity. During the war almost 1,000 missions were flown over the North Sea alone, compared to about 50 strategic bombing raids. The German Navy had some 15 Zeppelins in commission by the end of 1915 and was able to have two or more patrolling continuously at any one time. However their operations were limited by weather conditions. On February 16 La 3 and La 4 were lost owing to a combination of engine failure and high winds, La 3 crashing on the Danish island of Banner without loss of life and La 4 coming down at Bla van Schuik. Eleven crew escaped from the Ford gondola, after which the lightened airship with four crew members remaining in the aft engine car was blown out to sea and lost. At this stage in the war there was no clear doctrine for the use of naval airships. A single Zeppelin, La 5 played an unimportant part in the Battle of the Dogger Bank on January 24, 1915. La-5 was carrying out a routine patrol when it picked up Admiral Hipper's radio signal announcing that he was engaged with a British battlecruiser squadron. Heading towards the German fleet's position, the Zeppelin was forced to climb above the cloud cover by fire from the British fleet, its commander then decided that it was his duty to cover the retreating German fleet rather than observe British movements. In 1915 patrols were only carried out on 124 days, and in other years the total was considerably less. They prevented British ships from approaching Germany, spotted when and where the British were laying mines and later aided in the destruction of those mines. Zeppelins would sometimes land on the sea next to a minesweeper, bring aboard an officer and show him the mine's locations. In 1917 the British Navy began to take effective countermeasures against airship patrols over the North Sea. In April the first Curtis H-12 Large America long-range flying boats were delivered to RNAS Felixstowe, and in July 1917 the aircraft carrier HMS Furious entered service, and launching platforms for aeroplanes were fitted to the forward turrets of some light cruisers. On May 14 La-22 was shot down near Terschelling Bank by an H-12 flown by Lieutenant Galpin and Sub-LT. Lekai which had been alerted following interception of its radio traffic. Two further unsuccessful interceptions were made by Galpin and Lekai on May 24 and June 5, and on June 14 La-43 was brought down by an H-12 flown by Sub-LTS. Hobbs and Dickey on the same day Galpin and Lekai intercepted and attacked La 46. The Germans had believed that the previous unsuccessful attacks had been made by an aircraft operating from one of the British Navy's seaplane carriers, now realizing that there was a new threat, Strasser ordered airships patrolling in the Terschilling area to maintain an altitude of at least 4,000 am, considerably reducing their effectiveness. On August 21 La 23, patrolling off the Danish coast, was spotted by the British 3rd Light Cruiser Squadron which was in the area. HMS Yarmouth launched its SOP with PUP, and sub LT. BA Smart succeeded in shooting the Zeppelin down in flames. The cause of the airship's loss was not discovered by the Germans, who believed the Zeppelin had been brought down by anti-aircraft fire from surface ships. Bombing Campaign Against Britain at the beginning of the conflict the German command had high hopes for the airships, which were considerably more capable than contemporary light fixed-wing machines, they were almost as fast, could carry multiple machine guns, and had enormously greater bomb load range and endurance. Contrary to expectation, 
it was not easy to ignite the hydrogen using standard bullets and shrapnel. The Allies only started to exploit the Zeppelin's great vulnerability to fire when a combination of explosive and incendiary ammunition was introduced during 1916. The British had been concerned over the threat posed by Zeppelin since 1909, and attacked the Zeppelin bases early in the war. LZA-25 was destroyed in its hangar at Dar 1 Quarter Seldorf on October 8, 1914 by bombs dropped by FLT Lt. Reginald Merricks, RNAS, and the sheds at Cologne as well as the Zeppelin works in Friedrichshafen were also attacked. These raids were followed by the Cuxhaven raid on Christmas Day 1914, one of the first operations carried out by ship-launched aeroplanes. Airship raids on Great Britain were approved by the Kaiser on January 7, 1915, although he excluded London as a target and further demanded that no attacks be made on historic buildings. The raids were intended to target only military sites on the east coast and around the Thames estuary, but bombing accuracy was poor owing to the height at which the airships flew and navigation was problematic. The airships relied largely on dead reckoning, supplemented by a radio direction finding system of limited accuracy. After blackouts became widespread, many bombs fell at random on uninhabited countryside. 1915, the first raid on England took place on the night of 19 Euro January 20, 1915. Two Zeppelins, La 3 and La 4, intended to attack Humberside but, diverted by strong winds, eventually dropped their bombs on Great Yarmouth, Sheringham. Kings Lynn and the surrounding villages, killing four and injuring sixteen. Material damage was estimated at a £7,740. The Kaiser authorized the bombing of the London docks on February 12, 1915, but no raids on London took place until May. Two Navy raids failed due to bad weather on 14 and 15 April, and it was decided to delay further attempts until the more capable P class Zeppelins were in service. The Army received the first of these, LZA 38, and Eric Linouts commanded it on a raid over Ipswich on 29 Euro April 30 and another, attacking Southend on 9 Euro May 10. LZA 38 also attacked Dover and Ramsgate on 16 Euro May 17, before returning to bomb Southend on 26 Euro May 27. These four raids killed six people and injured six causing property damage estimated at a £16,898. Twice Royal Naval Air Service aircraft tried to intercept LZA-38 but on both occasions it was either able to outclimb the aircraft or was already at too great an altitude for the aircraft to intercept. On May 31 Lenouts commanded LZA-38 on the first raid against London. In total some 120 bombs were dropped on a line stretching from Stoke Newington south to Stepney and then north toward Leytonstone. Seven people were killed and 35 injured. 41 fires were started, burning out seven buildings and the total damage was assessed at a £18,596. Aware of the problems that the Germans were experiencing in navigation. This raid caused the government to issue a D notice prohibiting the press from reporting anything about raid that was not mentioned in official statements. Only one of the 15 defensive sorties managed to make visual contact with the enemy, and one of the pilots, FLT Lieutenant D. M. Barnes, was killed on attempting to land. The first naval attempt on London took place on June 4. Strong winds caused the commander of La 9 to misjudge his position, and the bombs were dropped on Gravesend. La 9 was also diverted by the weather on 6 Euro June 7, attacking Hull instead of London and causing considerable damage. On the same night an army raid of three Zeppelins also failed because of the weather, and as the airships returned to Eva Copyright Re they ran into a counter-raid by RNAS aircraft flying from Ferns, Belgium. LZA-38 was destroyed on the ground and LZA-37 was intercepted in the air by R.A.J. Warnford who dropped six bombs on the airship, setting it on fire. All but one of the crew died. Warnford was awarded the Victoria Cross for his achievement. As a consequence of the RNAS raid both the Army and Navy withdrew from their bases in Belgium. After an ineffective attack by La Ten on Tyneside on 15 Euro June 16 the short summer nights discouraged further raids for some months, 
and the remaining army zeppelins were reassigned to the eastern and Balkan fronts. The Navy resumed raids on Britain in August, when three largely ineffective raids were carried out. On August 10 the anti-aircraft guns had their first success, causing La 12 to come down into the sea off Zeebrugge, and on 17 a Euro August 18 La 10 became the first Navy airship to reach London. Mistaking the reservoirs of the Lee Valley for the Thames, it dropped its bombs on Walthamstow and Leytonstone. La 10 was destroyed a little over two weeks later, it was struck by lightning and caught fire off Cuxhaven, and the entire crew was killed. Three army airships set off to bomb London on 7 Euro September 8, of which two succeeded, Slat who dropped bombs between Southwark and Woolwich, LZA-74 scattered 39 bombs over Shashant before heading on to London and dropping a single bomb on Fenchurch Street Station. The Navy attempted to follow up the Army's success the following night. One Zeppelin targeted the Benzol plant at Skinningrove and three set off to bomb London, two were forced to turn back but La 13, commanded by Capita Currency Lieutenant Heinrich Mathie reached London. The bomb load included a 300 kg bomb the largest yet carried. This exploded near Smithfield Market, destroying several houses and killing two men. More bombs fell on the textile warehouses north of St. Paul's Cathedral, causing a fire which despite the attendance of 22 fire engines caused over half a million pounds of damage, Mathie then turned east, dropping his remaining bombs on Liverpool Street Station. The Zeppelin was the target of concentrated anti-aircraft fire, but no hits were scored and the falling shrapnel caused both damage and alarm on the ground. The raid killed 22 people and injured 87. The monetary damage was over one-sixth of the total damage inflicted by bombing raids during the war. After three more raids were scattered by the weather a five Zeppelin raid was launched by the Navy on October 13, the Thietland Raid. Arriving over the Norfolk coast at around 1830, the Zeppelins encountered new ground defences installed since the September raid which had no success, although the airship commanders commented on the improved defences of the city. La 15 began bombing over Charing Cross, the first bombs striking the Lyceum Theatre and the corner of Exeter and Wellington Streets, killing 17 and injuring 20. None of the other Zeppelins reached central London, bombs fell on Woolwich, Guildford, Tonbridge, Croydon, Hartford and an army camp near Folkestone. A total of 71 people were killed and 128 injured. This was the last raid of 1915, as bad weather coincided with the new moon in both November and December 1915 and continued into January 1916. Although these raids had no significant military impact, the psychological effect was considerable. The writer D. H. Lawrence described one raid in a letter to Lady Ottolin Morell. Then we saw the Zeppelin above us, just ahead, amid a gleaming of clouds, high up, like a bright golden finger, quite small then there was flashes near the ground a euro, and the shaking noise. It was like Milton a euro then there was war in heaven. I cannot get over it, that the moon is not queen of the sky by night, and the stars the lesser lights. It seems the Zeppelin is in the zenith of the night, golden like a moon, having taken control of the sky and the bursting shells of the lesser lights. 1916, the raids continued in 1916. In December 1915 additional PAR-class Zeppelins and the first of the new QA-class airships, were delivered. The QA-class was an enlargement of the PAR-class with improved ceiling and bomb load. The Army took full control of ground defences in February 1916, and a variety of sub-4-inch caliber guns were converted to anti-aircraft use. Searchlights were introduced, initially manned by police. By mid-1916, there were 271 anti-aircraft guns and 258 searchlights across England. Aerial defences against Zeppelins were divided between the RNAS and the Royal Flying Corps, with the Navy engaging enemy airships approaching the coast while the RFC took responsibility once the enemy had crossed the coastline. Initially the War Office had believed that the Zeppelins used a layer of inert gas to protect themselves from incendiary bullets, and favoured the use of bombs or devices like the rank and dart. However, by mid-1916 an effective mixture of explosive, tracer and incendiary rounds had been developed. 
There were 23 airship raids in 1916, in which 125 tons of bombs were dropped, killing 293 people and injuring 691. The first raid of 1916 was carried out by the German Navy. Nine Zeppelins were sent to Liverpool on the night of 31 January Euro February 1. A combination of poor weather and mechanical problems scattered them across the Midlands and several towns were bombed. A total of 61 people were reported killed and 101 injured by the raid. Despite ground fog, 22 aircraft took off to find the Zeppelins but none succeeded, and two pilots were killed when attempting to land. One airship, the Le 19, came down in the North Sea because of engine failure and damage from Dutch ground a Euro fire. Although the wreck stayed afloat for a while and was sighted by a British trawler, the boat's crew refused to rescue the Zeppelin crew because they were outnumbered, and all 16 crew died. Further raids were delayed by an extended period of poor weather and also by the withdrawal of the majority of naval Zeppelins in an attempt to resolve the recurrent engine failures. Three Zeppelins set off to bomb Rosyth on 5 a year on March 6 but were forced by high winds to divert to Hull, killing 18, injuring 52 and causing a £25,005 damage. At the beginning of April raids were attempted on five successive nights. Ten airships set off on March 31, most turned back and La 15, damaged by anti-aircraft fire and an aircraft attacking using rank and darts, came down in the sea near Margate. Most of the 48 killed in the raid were victims of a single bomb which fell on an army billet in Cleethorpes. The following night two Navy Zeppelins bombed targets in the north of England, killing 22 and injuring 130. On the night of 2 thirds April a six airship raid was made, targeting the naval base at Rosseth, the fourth bridge in London. None of the airships bombed their intended targets. Thirteen were killed, 24 injured and much of the A77113 pounds damage was caused by a destruction of a warehouse in Leith containing whiskey. Raids on April 5, April and 5 slash April 6 had little effect, as did a five Zeppelin raid on June 25 April and a raid by a single army Zeppelin the following night. On February 3 July a nine Zeppelin raid against Manchester and Rosyth was largely ineffective due to weather conditions, and one was forced to land in neutral Denmark, its crew being interned. On 28 a Euro July 29 the first raid to include one of the new and much larger I-class Zeppelins, La 31, took place. The 10 Zeppelin raid achieved very little. Four turned back early and the rest wandered over a fog-covered landscape before giving up. Adverse weather dispersed raids on 30 a Euro July 31 and 2 a Euro August 3, and on 8 a Euro August 9 nine airships attacked Hull with little effect. On 24 a Euro August 25 12 Navy Zeppelins were launched, eight turned back without attacking and only Heinrich Mathis La 31 reached London. Flying above low clouds, 36 bombs were dropped in 10 minutes on southeast London. Nine people were killed, 40 injured and a £130,203 of damage was caused. The biggest raid to date was launched on 2 Euro September 3, when 12 German Navy and four Army airships set out to bomb London. A combination of rain and snowstorms scattered the airships while they were still over the North Sea. Only one of the naval airships came within seven miles of central London, and both damage and casualties were slight. The newly commissioned Sha 1 quarter TTE Landslau 11 dropped a few bombs on Hertfordshire while approaching London, it was picked up by searchlights at as it bombed Ponders End and at around 02.15 it was intercepted by a BE-2C flown by Lieutenant William Leaf Robinson, who fired three drums of ammunition into the airship. The third drum started a fire and the airship was quickly enveloped in flames. It fell to the ground near Cuffley, witnessed by the crews of several of the other Zeppelins and many on the ground. There were no survivors. The victory earned Leif Robinson a Victoria Cross. The pieces of Slough 11 were gathered up and sold as souvenirs by the Red Cross to raise money for wounded soldiers. The loss of Slough 11 ended the German army's enthusiasm for raids on Britain. The German Navy remained aggressive, and another 12 Zeppelin raid was launched on 23 Euro September 24. Eight older airships bombed targets in the Midlands and northeast, 
while four A-class Zeppelins attacked London. La 30 did not even cross the coast, dropping its bombs at sea. La 31 approached London from the south, dropping a few bombs on the South Elm suburbs before crossing the Thames and bombing Leighton, killing eight people and injuring 30. La 32 also approached from the south, it dropped a few bombs on Seven Oaks and Swanley before crossing per fleet at about 0100. Shortly afterwards it was found by a BE-2C piloted by 2nd Lieutenant Frederick Soray and set alight, coming down near Great Burstead. The entire crew was killed. La 33 dropped a few incendiaries over Upminster and Bromley by bow, where it was hit by an anti-aircraft shell, despite being at an altitude of 13,000 feet. As it headed towards Chelmsford it began to lose height and came down close to Little Wigborough. The airship was set alight by its crew, but inspection of the wreckage provided the British with much information about the construction of Zeppelins, which was used in the design of the British R-33 class airships. The next raid came on October 1, 1916. Eleven Zeppelins were launched at targets in the Midlands and at London. Only La 31, commanded by the experienced Heinrich Mithy making his 15th raid, reached London. As the airship neared Shishant at about 23.20 the airship was picked up by searchlights and attacked by three aircraft from No. 39 Squadron. Second Lieutenant Walstam Tempest succeeded in setting fire to the airship, which came down near Potter's Bar. All 19 crew died, with the jumping from the burning airship. For the next raid, on 27 a year on November 28, the Zeppelins avoided London for targets in the Midlands. Again the defending aircraft was successful, La 34 was shot down over the mouth of the Tees and La 21 was attacked by two aircraft and crashed into the sea off Lowestoft. There were no further raids in 1916 although the Navy lost three more craft, all on December 28, Slat 12 was destroyed at Arlan by strong winds after sustaining damage in a poor landing, and at Tondran La 24 crashed into the shed while landing. The resulting fire destroyed both La 24 and the adjacent La 17. 1917. To counter the increasingly effective defences, new Zeppelins were introduced with an increased operating altitude of 16,500 feet and a ceiling of 21,000 feet. The first of these S class Zeppelins, LZA 91, entered service in February 1917. They were basically a modification of the R class sacrificing strength and power for improved altitude. The surviving A-class Zeppelins were adapted by removing one of the engines. The improved safety was offset by the extra strain on the airship crews caused by altitude sickness and exposure to extreme cold and operating difficulties caused by cold and unpredictable high winds encountered at altitude. The first raid of 1917 did not occur until 16 a year on March 17. The five high-flying Zeppelins encountered very strong winds and none reached their targets. This experience was repeated on 23 a year on May 24. Two days later 21 Gotha bombers attempted a daylight raid on London. They were frustrated by heavy cloud but the effort led the Kaiser to announce that airship raids on London were to stop. Under pressure he later relented to allow the Zeppelins to attack under favourable circumstances. On 16 a Euro June 17, another raid was attempted. Six Zeppelins were to take part, but two were kept in their shed by high winds and another two were forced to return by engine failure. La 42 bombed Ramsgate, hitting a munitions store. The month-old La 48, the first way class Zeppelin, was forced to drop to 13,000 feet where it was caught by four aircraft and destroyed, crashing near Thurberton, Suffolk. After ineffective raids on the Midlands and other targets in the north of England on 21 a Euro August 22 and 24 a Euro September 25, the last major Zeppelin raid of the war was launched on 19 a Euro October 20, with 13 airships heading for Sheffield, Manchester and Liverpool. All were hindered by an unexpected strong headwind at altitude. La 45 was trying to reach Sheffield, but instead it dropped bombs on Northampton and London. Most fell in the northwest suburbs, but three 300 kg bombs fell in Piccadilly, Camberwell, and Hither Green, causing most of the casualties that night. La 45 then reduced altitude to try to escape the wind but was forced back into the higher air currents by a BE 2E. The 
the airship then had mechanical failure in three engines and was blown over France, eventually coming down near Cisteron. It was set on fire and the crew surrendered. La 44 was brought down by ground fire over France, La 49 and La 50 were also lost to engine failure and the weather over France. La 55 was badly damaged on landing and later scrapped. There were no more raids in 1917, although the airships were not abandoned but refitted with new, more powerful engines. 1918, there were only four raids in 1918, all against targets in the Midlands and northern England. Five Zeppelins attempted to bomb the Midlands on 12 a Euro March 3 to little effect. The following night three Zeppelins set off, but two turned back because of the weather, the third bombed Hartlepool, killing eight and injuring 29. A five Zeppelin raid on 12 a Euro April 13 was also largely ineffective, with thick clouds making accurate navigation impossible. However some alarm was caused by the other two, one of which reached the east coast and bombed Wigan, believing it was Sheffield, the other bombed Coventry in the belief that it was Birmingham. The final raid on August 5, 1918 involved four airships and resulted in the loss of L-70 and the death of its entire crew under the command of Fregatenker Peter Currency N. Peter Strasse, head of the Imperial German Naval Airship Service and the far one quarter rear der Luftschiff. Crossing the North Sea during daylight, the airship was intercepted by a Royal Air Force DH-4 biplane piloted by Major Egbert Cadbury, and shot down in flames. Technological Progress Zeppelin technology improved considerably as a result of the increasing demands of warfare. The company came under government control, and new personnel were recruited to the company to cope with the increased demand including the aerodynamicist Paul Jurey and the stress engineer Carl Arnstein. Additionally, the company was now able to use features covered by Shetland's patents. New production facilities were set up assembling Zeppelins from components fabricated in Friedrichshafen. The pre-war M-class designs were quickly enlarged, to produce the 163 meters long Duralumin P-class, which increased gas capacity from 22,500 AM3 to 31,900 AM3, introduced a fully enclosed gondola and an extra engine. These modifications added 610 AM to the maximum ceiling, around 9 km per hour to the top speed, and greatly increased crew comfort and hence endurance. 22 P-class airships were built. The first, LZA-38, was delivered to the Army on April 3, 1915. The P-class was followed by a lengthened version, the Q-class. In July 1916 Luftschiff Bau Zeppelin introduced the R-class, 199.49 am long, and with a volume of 55,210 AM3. These could carry loads of 3 to 4 tons of bombs and reach speeds of up to 103 km per hour, powered by six 240 HP Maybach engines. In 1917, following losses to air defences over Britain, new designs were produced which were capable of flying at much higher altitudes, typically operating at around 6,100 AM. This was achieved by reducing the weight of the airship by reducing the weight of the structure, halving the bomb load, deleting the defensive armament and by reducing the number of engines to five. A considerable contribution to these technological advances originated from Zeppelin's only serious competitor, the Mannheim-based Schir One Quarter TTE Lands Company. While their dirigibles never became comparably successful, Professor Shu One Quarter TTE's more scientific approach to airship design led to important innovations copied, over time, by the Zeppelin company. These included the streamlined hull shape, the simple yet functional cruciform fins, individual direct drive engine cars, anti aircraft machine gun positions, and gas ventilation shafts which transferred vented hydrogen to the top of the airship. At the beginning of the war Captain Ernst A. Lehmann and Baron Jamingen, Count Zeppelin's nephew, developed an observation car for use by dirigibles. This was equipped with a wicker chair, char table, electric lamp and compass, with telephone line and lightning conductor part of the suspension cable. The car's observer would relay navigation and bomb dropping orders to the Zeppelin flying with an oar above the clouds, so remaining invisible from the ground. Although used by army airships, 
they were not used by the Navy, since Strasser considered that their weight meant an unacceptable reduction in bomb load. And of the war, the German defeat also marked the end of German military dirigibles, as the victorious Allies demanded a complete abolition of German air forces and surrender of the remaining airships as reparations. Specifically, the Treaty of Versailles contained the following articles dealing explicitly with dirigibles, Article 198, the armed forces of Germany must not include any military or naval air forces. No dirigible shall be kept. Article 202, on the coming into force of the present treaty, all military and naval aeronautical material must be delivered to the governments of the principal allied and associated powers. In particular, this material will include all items under the following heads which are or have been in use or were designed for warlike purposes. Dirigibles able to take to the air, being manufactured, repaired or assembled. Plant for the manufacture of hydrogen. Dirigible sheds and shelters of every kind for aircraft. Pending their delivery, dirigibles will, at the expense of Germany, be maintained inflated with hydrogen. The plant for the manufacture of hydrogen, as well as the sheds for dirigibles may at the discretion of the said powers, be left to Germany until the time when the dirigibles are handed over. On June 23, 1919, a week before the treaty was signed, many Zeppelin crews destroyed their airships in their halls in order to prevent delivery, following the example of the German fleet which had been scuttled two days before in Scarpa flow. The remaining dirigibles were transferred to France, Italy, Britain, and Belgium in 1920. A total of 84 Zeppelins were built during the war. Over 60 were lost, roughly evenly divided between accident and enemy action. 51 raids had been made on England alone, in which 5,806 bombs were dropped, killing 557 people and injuring 1,358 while causing damage estimated at a £1.5 million. It has been argued the raids were effective far beyond material damage in diverting and hampering wartime production. One estimate is that the due to the 1915 Euro 16 raids, one sixth of the total normal output of munitions was entirely lost. After World War I renaissance, Count von Zeppelin had died in 1917, before the end of the war. Dr. Hugo Eckner, who had long envisioned dirigibles as vessels of peace rather than of war, took command of the Zeppelin business, hoping to quickly resume civilian flights. Despite considerable difficulties, they completed two small passenger AIRS HPS. LZ-120 Boden C, which first flew in August 1919 and in the following months transported passengers between Friedrichshafen and Berlin, and a sister ship LZ-121 Nordsten, which was intended for use on a regular route to Stockholm. However, in 1921 the Allied powers demanded that these should be handed over as war reparations as compensation for the dirigibles destroyed by their crews in 1919. Germany was not allowed to construct military aircraft and only airships of less than 28,000 AM3 were permitted. This brought a halt to Zeppelin's plans for airship development, and the company temporarily had to resort to manufacturing aluminium cooking utensils. Ekener and his co-workers refused to give up and kept looking for investors and a way to circumvent Allied restrictions. Their opportunity came in 1924. The United States had started to experiment with rigid airships, constructing one of their own, the ZR-1 United States Dollar Shenandoah, and buying the R-38 when the British airship program was cancelled. However, this broke apart and caught fire during a test flight above the Humber on August 23, 1921, killing 44 crewmen. Under these circumstances, Ekener managed to obtain an order for the next American dirigible. Germany had to pay for this airship itself, as the cost was set against the war reparation accounts, but for the Zeppelin company this was unimportant. LZA-126 made its first flight on August 27, 1924. On October 12 at 7.30 local time the Zeppelin took off for the U.S. under the command of Hugo Eckner. The ship completed its 8,050 km voyage without any difficulties in 80 hours 45 minutes. American crowds enthusiastically celebrated the arrival, and President Calvin Coolidge invited Eckner and his crew to the White House, 
calling the new Zeppelin an angel of peace. Given the designation ZR-3 United States Dollars Los Angeles, the airship became the most successful American airship. It operated reliably for eight years until it was retired in 1932 for economic reasons. It was dismantled in August 1940. Golden Age With the delivery of LZ-126, the Zeppelin Company had reasserted its lead in rigid airship construction, but it was not yet quite back in business. In 1926 restrictions on airship construction were relaxed by the Locarno Treaties, but acquiring the necessary funds for the next project proved a problem in the difficult economic situation of post-World War I Germany, and it took Ekener two years of lobbying and publicity work to secure the realization of LZ-127. Another two years passed before September 18, 1928, when the new dirigible, christened Graf Zeppelin in honor of the Count, flew for the first time. With a total length of 236.6 meters and a volume of 105,000 m3, it was the largest dirigible to have been built at the time. Ekener's initial purpose was to use Graf Zeppelin for experimental and demonstration purposes to prepare the way for regular airship traveling, carrying passengers and mail to cover the costs. In October 1928 its first long-range voyage brought it to Lakehurst, the voyage taking 112 hours and setting a new endurance record for airships. Ekener and his crew, which included his son Hans, were once more welcomed enthusiastically, with confetti parades in New York and another invitation to the White House. Graf Zeppelin toured Germany and visited Italy, Palestine, and Spain. A second trip to the United States was aborted in France due to engine failure in May 1929. In August 1929 Graf Zeppelin departed for another daring enterprise, a circumnavigation of the globe. The growing popularity of the giant of the air made it easy for Ekener to find sponsors. One of these was the American press tycoon William Randolph Hearst, who requested that the tour officially start in Lakehurst. As with the October 1928 flight to New York, Hearst had placed a reporter, Grace Marguerite Hay Drummond Hay, on board, she therefore became the first woman to circumnavigate the globe by air. From there, Graf Zeppelin flew to Friedrichshafen, then Tokyo, Los Angeles, and back to Lakehurst, in 21 a days 5 hours and 31 a minutes. Including the initial and final trips between Friedrichshafen and Lakehurst and back. The dirigible had traveled 49,618 kilometers. In the following year, Graf Zeppelin undertook trips around Europe, and following a successful tour to Recife, Brazil in May 1930, it was decided to open the first regular transatlantic airship line. This line operated between Frankfurt and Recife, and was later extended to Rio de Janeiro, with a stop in Recife. Despite the beginning of the Great Depression and growing competition from fixed-wing aircraft, LZ-127 transported an increasing volume of passengers and mail across the ocean every year until 1936. The ship made another spectacular voyage in July 1931 when it made a seven-day research trip to the Arctic. This had already been a dream of Count von Zeppelin 20 years earlier, which could not be realized at the time due to the outbreak of war. Ekener intended to follow the successful airship by another larger Zeppelin, designated LZA-128. This was to be powered by eight engines 232 AM with a capacity of 199,980 AM-3. However the loss of the British passenger airship A-101 on October 5, 1930 led the Zeppelin company to reconsider the safety of hydrogen-filled vessels, and the design was abandoned in favor of a new project. LZA-129. This was intended to be filled with inert helium, Hindenburg, and a veneera. The coming to power of the Nazi party in 1933 had important consequences for Zeppelin Luftschiff Bau. Zeppelins became a propaganda tool for the new regime, they would now display the Nazi swastika on their fins and occasionally tour Germany to play march music and propaganda speeches to the people. In 1934 Joseph Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda, contributed two million Reichsmarks towards the construction of LZA-129 and in 1935 Hermann Göring established a new airline directed by Ernst Lehmann, the Deutsche Zeppelin Reedere, 
as a subsidiary of Lufthansa to take over Zeppelin operations. Hugo Eckener was an outspoken anti-Nazi, complaints about the use of Zeppelins for propaganda purposes in 1936 led Goebbels to declare Dr. Eckener has placed himself outside the pale of society. Henceforth his name is not to be mentioned in the newspapers and his photograph is not to be published. On March 4, 1936 LZ-129 Hindenburg made its first flight. The Hindenburg was the largest airship ever built. It had been designed to use non-inflammable helium, but the only supplies of the gas were controlled by the United States, who refused to allow its export. So, in what proved to be a fatal decision, the Hindenburg was filled with flammable hydrogen. Apart from the propaganda missions, LZ-129 was used on the transatlantic service alongside Graf Zeppelin. On May 6, 1937, while landing in Lakehurst after a transatlantic flight, the tail of the ship caught fire, and within seconds, the Hindenburg burst into flames, killing 35 of the 97 people on board and one member of the ground crew. The cause of the fire has not been definitively determined. The investigation into the accident concluded that static electricity had ignited hydrogen which had leaked from the gas bags, although there were allegations of sabotage. Thirteen passengers and 22 crew, including Ernst Lehmann, were killed. Despite the apparent danger, there remained a list of 400 people who still wanted to fly as Zeppelin passengers and had paid for the trip. Their money was refunded in 1940. Graf Zeppelin was retired one month after the Hindenburg wreck and turned into a museum. The intended new flagship Zeppelin was completed in 1938 and, inflated with hydrogen, made some test flights, but never carried passengers. Another project, LZ-131, designed to be even larger than Hindenburg and Graf Zeppelin II, never progressed beyond the production of a few ring frames. Graf Zeppelin II was assigned to the Luftwaffe and made about 30 test flights prior to the beginning of World War II. Most of those flights were carried out near the Polish border, first in the Sudeten Mountains region of Silesia, then in the Baltic Sea region. During one such flight LZ-130 crossed the Polish border near the Hel Peninsula, where it was intercepted by a Polish Lublin or XII aircraft from Puck Naval Air Base and forced to leave Polish airspace. During this time, LZ-130 was used for electronic scouting missions, and was equipped with various measuring equipment. In August 1939, it made a flight near the coastline of Great Britain in an attempt to determine whether the 100-metre towers erected from Portsmouth to Scarpa Flow were used for aircraft radio location. Photography, radio wave interception, Magnetic and radio frequency analysis were unable to detect operational British chain home radar due to searching in the wrong frequency range. The frequencies searched were too high, an assumption based on the Germans' own radar systems. The mistaken conclusion was the British towers were not connected with radar operations, but were for naval radio communications. After the beginning of the Second World War on September 1, the Luftwaffe ordered LZA 127 and LZ 130 moved to a large Zeppelin hangar in Frankfurt, where the skeleton of LZ 131 was also located. In March 1940, Gar Paragraph A Ring ordered the scrapping of the remaining airships, and on May 6, the Frankfurt hangars were demolished. Cultural influences Zeppelins have been an inspiration to music, cinematography, and literature. In 1934, the Calypsonian Atoll of the Hun recorded Graf Zeppelin, commemorating the airship's visit to Trinidad. Zeppelins are often featured in alternate history fiction. In the American science fiction series, Fringe, Zeppelins are a notable historical idiosyncrasy that helps differentiate the series' two parallel universes, also used in Doctor Who in the episodes The Rise of the Cybermen, and The Age of Steel. When the TARDIS crashes in an alternate reality where Britain is a People's Republic and Pete Tyler, Rose Tyler's father, is alive and is a wealthy inventor. They are also seen in the alternate reality 1939 plotline in the film Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, and have an iconic association with the steampunk subcultural movement in broader terms. In 1989, Japanese animator Miyazaki released Key's Delivery Service which features a Zeppelin as a plot element. 
1968, English rock band Led Zeppelin chose their name after Keith Moon, drummer of The Who, told guitarist Jimmy Page that his idea to create a band would go down like a Led Zeppelin. Page's manager Peter Grant suggested changing the spelling of Led to Led to avoid mispronunciation. For the group's self-titled debut album, Page suggested the group use a picture of the Hindenburg crashing in New Jersey in 1937, much to Frau Eva von Zeppelin a Euro unregistered trademark s disgust. Von Zeppelin tried to sue the group for using the name Zeppelin, but the case was eventually dismissed. Modern era, since the 1990s Zeppelin Luftschiff Technique, a daughter enterprise of the Zeppelin conglomerate that built the original German Zeppelins, has been developing Zeppelin new technology airships. These vessels are semi-rigid based partly on internal pressure, partly on a frame. The Airship Ventures company operated Zeppelin passenger travel to California from October 2008 to November 2012 with one of these Zeppelin NT airships. In May 2011, Goodyear announced that they will be replacing their fleet of blimps with Zeppelin NTs. This will be resurrecting their partnership that ended over 70 years ago. They will also be building the airships in America. See also, Airship Hangar, Buoyancy Compensator, Lane Hydrogen Producer, List of Airships of the United States Navy, List of Sha One Quarter TTE Lands Airships, List of Zeppelins, Zeppelin Museum Friedrichshafen, References, Notes, Citations, Bibliography. Further reading. External links, airships.net, the Hindenburg and other Zeppelins, how did London civilians respond to the German airship raids of 1915? Zeppelin NT in the world and technical data, airships.net a Euro illustrated history of passenger Zeppelins, EZEP de Euro the web portal for Zeppelin mail and airship memorabilia, Zeppelin post journal a Euro quarterly publication for Zeppelin mail and airship memorabilia. Zeppelin Luftschiff Technique GmbH a Euro the original company, now developing the Zeppelin NT, Dark Autumn, the 1916 German Zeppelin Offensive.